Hey everybody, it's Flying Ryan here, and I'm constantly getting questions about, you know, what quad do I recommend for a first time uh, flyer? You know, I want to get into quads, what kind of things do I need to know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I figured I'd make a video here to cover all the basics. Uh, first of all, for people that have no RC flying experience at all and they're looking to get into RC flight with a quadcopter, this is my usual suggestion. This is the UDI U816A. Now, you may not think that this is the coolest looking quad or, you know, maybe it doesn't do much for you, but I am a big fan of, you know, starting simple and safe and easy learning flight on something like this. This thing is cheap. It's easy to fly. It's super durable. I mean, this foam guard, you can bounce it off your face. You can bounce it off furniture and fly it in the house. You're not going to hurt it or anybody. So I always suggest to learn on this. You're going to, you're going to, you know, appreciate it in the long run. You're not going to spend money breaking parts or, you know, you go and get a DJI Phantom right off the bat and crash it in the yard and you're out a thousand dollars. You know, this is, thirty forty dollars something like that i think and you're gonna have a hard time breaking it and then as you get better with this you can actually take the foam frame off and it comes with an outdoor canopy so then you just have a little center canopy and it looks more like you're in a, your usual quad without all this foam around it and then you can practice a little bit faster flight outdoors uh, so th this is just a really good starter you can learn your flight on this even if you have some RC flight experience, but you want to, you know, kind of get used to quads, I still think this is a good place to start. Uh, though there may be some better um, options if you do have some flight experience. So go ahead and, you know, feel free to ask in the comments if you, you know, want something a little more advanced. If you do have some experience, I can try to give you a little bit better suggestions. Uh, but basics now for, you know, quadcopters, some things to know. Uh, one of the problems I hear about all the time is due to people taking the props off and putting them back on in the wrong position. Uh, the way quadcopters work is you've got counter-rotating motors. So the front left and the back right motors actually rotate the same way, and then these, ro ro these motors rotate the same as each other, but in the opposite direction of the other. So say this one rotates this way, this one rotates this way. So the the props have a very specific pitch to them. You'll see one side is angled down, one side's angled up, and then on this blade, it's the exact opposite. So if you put this blade over here, if you switch these around, they will no longer be creating lift, but they'll actually be pushing air up. And so I, I hear all the time, you know, hey, my every time I try to take off, my quad just flips over. Well, that's because you've got one side creating lift and the other side creating downforce and the one that lifts goes up and the one that creates the downforce stays down. So if you find yourself, you know, the quad lifts up this way, whatever side stays down, those props are backwards. So just reverse them and now you'll get proper lift. So anytime you take your props off, be, you know, very aware of which way the pitch goes or if you take them off you know lay them out in order so you know which motor you took them off from uh, most of them do have little indicators i don't know if i'll be able to get this to show up on video or not but there is a little b uh, printed on the plastic of the prop there and generally there may be a b um, also printed on the motor mount somewhere. It doesn't look like this one actually has it printed on there, uh, but it probably has in the manual which motor is B and which motor is A. And so you always want to make sure to match those letters up. Uh, but, you know, I find it easiest just when you take a prop off, just remember where it came from. If you take all four off, lay them out in order, and then you'll know exactly where to put them back on. Um, so yeah, that I get I get questions about that all the time. Uh, so that's definitely you know a beginner's mistake and something to keep an eye on. Uh, so now I'll cover a little bit of the controls. So this is a four-channel aircraft. So you've got throttle, you've got left and right rudder, forward and backward pitch, also known as elevator, and left and right pitch, also known as aileron. So when you give rudder, that rotates the the quad around its center axis so if you give left rudder it's going to turn to the left this the orange props here are the front 
if you give right rudder, it's going to turn to the right. And then the right stick is all your pitches. So it's kind of easy to remember, you know, if you give left on the right stick, it's going to pitch to the left. You give right, it's going to pitch to the right. You give up, it's going to pitch to the forward. Back, it's going to pitch backwards. So this stick controls all the way it leans. This stick controls the way it turns. Uh, so when you're getting started, I suggest just starting with hovering. Don't try to be you know doing stunts and flying circuits and everything right off the bat you're going to want to just kind of get a feel for the the throttle and learn to you know where you gotta you kind of have to always manage it um i get a lot of people that seem to think that you know maybe they see me fly and the, the quad just sits there and they think that that's all hands off no that's me doing that that's it, it takes constant little corrections from the pilot to keep a quad hovering in place unless it has gps these these little toy quads, you know, they'll kind of always drift around. You can maybe get them to hover in place on their own for a few seconds, but they will eventually kind of veer off and you've got to make little corrections for that. So the first step is just learning to hover. Get, get a feel for your throttle, you know, find out how to kind of keep it at about the same height. You know, you'll, it, it, you'll, it'll slowly lower itself and you have to give a little bit more throttle and then you'll have to kind of let off a little bit. So you're kind of always just doing a little bit of throttle management to maintain an elevation. So start with that and then just kind of use little movements on the stick to kind of, you know, correct if it moves off to the side or whatnot. Um, you do have trim buttons, which generally shouldn't be needed. These new quads have six axis stabilization. They have accelerometers in them, so they know what level is. So they should stay pretty much level. If you find that it does always want to drift to the right, I mean, every single time it constantly does a drift to the right, give left trim input. So each of these trim buttons matches the, the movement on the stick. So this trim button is your up and down. This trim button is your left and right. This trim button is your yaw. And then this trim button is your throttle, which you'll pretty much never use. Yeah, actually, this doesn't even, doesn't even do anything on this controller. Um, so you generally you shouldn't have to use those, but sometimes you may have to give a little bit. If it wants to drift off, just give opposite the trim opposite of the way it's drifting until it kind of stays level. Um, so yeah, first things first, start with your hover, kind of hold it in place. Just get a feel for what it takes to kind of keep that hover going. Um, something else you see here that I'm doing, I'm a pincher, so I like to grab my sticks with my thumb and my pointer finger like that, but some people just fly with their thumbs. So maybe experiment with those two different modes, see if you know one feels more natural to you than the other. Um, I think that this is a little bit more precise. You kind of get a better feel for exactly where your sticks are. Uh, but there are people that fly with their thumbs that are perfectly precise as well. So it's it's really just a matter of preference. But, you know, do try both and see which works for you. Um, but as you start to get better at hovering, then you can start m maybe working in the right stick a little bit more. So um, one of the popular methods to learn flight that I've, you know, I've seen this posted for helicopters and all kinds of different things, is basically flying in a square. So you take off in a hover fly forward to the next corner, fly left to the next corner, fly back to the next corner, fly right back to where you started. So just do that over and over again in a square until you kind of get a good feel for that and you can kind of do it nice and precise. Then as you get good with that, now you're gonna start mixing in rudder. So fly forward to that corner, now do a rudder turn and fly forward to the next corner do another rudder turn, fly forward back to you, another rudder turn, forward back to where you started. And then this is the hardest part. When you're flying towards you, all your inputs are now backwards because when you hit left on the stick, this is left um, for the quadcopter's perspective, but to you, it's, it's, it looks like it's to the right. But so you got to remember, you're basically put yourself in the pilot seat. That's how I tend to fly as if I always keep my head as if I am inside the pilot's seat. So left is, you know, always going to be left from if I was sitting inside the quad. So don't think about what you're looking like. This isn't, this isn't right based on, you know, just your vision. This is left because you're sitting in here facing this way. So your left is actually visually to the right. 
So that's the hardest part about flying quads and helicopters. Uh, it's called nose in hovering. That's probably the last thing you want to master is getting used to you know all the backwards controls when you're um, facing yourself. Uh, but so once you've mastered all that, you know, flying in the square and nose in hovering, you're pretty much ready to go. You're going to be able to move on to you know a bigger quad, the quad that you actually want uh, to fly. You know the the thing that you're you know, you've had your heart set on, now you can go out and confidently fly it and not worry about crashing it and spending a bunch of time and money fixing parts. Uh, and I think really that's about all I have to say about getting started. So, you know, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that kind of gives you a head start and some ideas on how to learn how to fly uh, some quadcopters. All right, well, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you next time.